start at the very beginning of my sort of um, uh, journey, I guess. Um, so this was the first piece of work I ever exhibited. Um, it was in my second year um, at Manchester. And it was at Islington Mill. And we were forced into groups to put on an exhibition together as part of the course. So it wasn't great, but it was it was good, like kind of um, learning, I guess. And um, I had this idea leading up to it um, that I was going to advertise that there was going to be a bouncy castle at the exhibition for months and get everybody really excited. And then when they got there, they weren't allowed to go on it. So it's called the bouncer. So I hired a bouncer to stand next to this bouncy castle and just guard it. <laughs> but like um, the, our, our tutor brought a kid who was about um, 10 at the time and she told him he wasn't allowed to go on it and he was crying and I thought that was a really good start to um, make him work and understanding um, you know, what, what happens when you put something like this into, I guess, public realm or whatever. So yeah, it went well. <laughs> and then from this, um, I started to organise exhibitions around Manchester, um, just finding places that would have us basically putting a group together of about um, 10 people from painting and sculpture and print and everything from MMU and start to throw these exhibitions. Just didn't really know what I was doing at the time, apart from picking kind of interesting work from the studios that was norm normally being thrown out because we were only in second year and kind of putting on exhibitions that didn't really mean anything apart from, um, you know, having an exhibition, I guess, and learning from that. So yeah, did some of them did one at Piccadilly Place and um, 2022, I think this is like a ping pong bar now, this place. I think the last time I went in, people were just playing ping pong, which is a shame because it used to be a good place to exhibit work and it was like in the Northern Quarter in Manchester, so really central and... Oh, can you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I went in last time, it was like... It is ping pong. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice space as well, and like, I um, can't remember what we did with alcohol, but I think we bought tokens or something like that from the bar and used them, so it was a real good, like, party. Um, and then did one at Piccadilly Place. I think this isn't available, I don't know, I'm not sure, but I don't think this is available anymore either. Oh, yeah, 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 this is pretty depressing, isn't it? Um, but I'm sure there is loads of places in Manchester still to exhibit um, but this was good because all you had to do was pay for the bouncer and it was free to exhibit um, and did another one and what we started to do at this time or me was invite artists who weren't students to exhibit alongside us which gave us kind of more mm, like a professional identity I guess if you wanted to you know put a title on it because people took us a lot more seriously do you know like um, we had galleries come down and curators and people and actually start to pay attention rather than just being a group of students work it was more like a um yeah exhibit real exhibition i guess even though the the graduates we had only been out of like uni for a year so it kind of didn't really mean anything um then this was my degree show work um which is uh, double glazed windows and i filled them up with a um, window cleaner um, different colours, um, yeah, which was very different to some of the other things I was doing. So made my tutors a bit mad. I thought I was going to fail, and then um, I didn't. So it was all right. But um, I don't know what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to show more, and I don't know. I guess that's why I didn't. Um, and then. I got fed up of looking for spaces all the time and having different challenges, so I wanted my own space. So around the time of graduating, a few months before, the Royal Standard, which I don't know how many people know, it's like a studio group in Liverpool. I think it's got 40 artists there now, 
was taken over another building um, to open up studios and um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so they've got like a gallery as well, so they run their own program. But I thought this was a good opportunity to have a project space within the Royal Standard. Um, in a similar way that Rogue in Manchester had like a Rogue project space, Margras Norda, or what, uh, and then I think it was called something else after that, after I left. Um, so it, that kind of similar thing. And it was good space to have because the rent is ridiculously cheap. Um, you know, there's no business rates on top, no bills on top. That's all covered by the Royal Standard. And there are charity as well, so it's reduced rates. Um, yeah, so I got this space, which was pretty horrible looking when I got it. So I changed it quite a bit. Um, knocked that wall down. I can't really see, but you kind of see from where the door is. It was like a horrible like office kind of wall, like a, like a fake wall. So I wanted to open it up into the building more. So um, yeah, I knocked it down. Oh yeah, and then around about this time, Graduating, I was shortlisted for um, an exhibition at Castlefield Gallery, which I didn't get. I was really pissed off. And um, I thought I'd never get anything again. <laughs> at that time, I was really down. Didn't want to be an artist anymore. <laughs> um, just being like a depressive kind of 22 year old. And um, then my, friend, my best friend got in the exhibition and he made this work for it called Turn Top, which is, I don't really know, but it's like some rapper quote phrase or whatever. And um, then like a year later, I think it was, I got asked to um, be in an exhibition at Castlefield Gallery. So I had the perfect idea, I thought anyway. <laughs> um, so I got the same person who made his neon to make me one that said Turn Down. And I had a dimmer attached to it. So it was like Turn Down. Um, which I was really happy with at the time, which is kind of stupid. <laughs> I was that happy with it, but Castlefield Gallery really liked it too. I thought it was really good. It was like a inspirational thing for everyone who'd ever been turned down. And someone, while I was doing like a question and answers thing there, someone said, what's the next one gonna be? Is it gonna be like burnt down? <laughs> which I thought was pretty good. I haven't done that one yet. Um, and then one of the other works I had was um, I printed the um, exhibition handouts on edible paper with edible ink so people could like eat the information for the exhibition. And Gas, um, the curator there, did this really, really long like text. And they gave me a dig back, I think. Um, that was a really strong theory. <laughs> It turned out well, and it was really sunny, not like today. And then, got asked to curate um, a small exhibition from NMU graduates um, to go with this like symposium they had, which was like a day of talks. They normally do it around when you leave in Manchester um, to get like artists in. Um, I guess similar to this, but not as, a, not as big, just like a day thing. Um, and they asked me to create an exhibition. Um, they, they wanted me, uh, I kind of caused a bit of a fuss because I got artists and they didn't think I'd get, basically. They thought I'd just get my friends, I think, and it'd be easy. It wasn't that easy. It ended up being more complicated, which was fine. But Cactus wasn't open at this time yet. So I rebuilt the same scale space inside toast um, which was like a it's gone now i think yeah um which was like a initiative by castlefield gallery which was a they took over like an old um what was the building was it oh yeah yeah federation house yeah um and they had like studios and there was lots of like exciting things happening in there and toast was on the top floor i don't think it was open at this point to it but yeah Built the same space, Cactus, basically, and did this exhibition. And then, yeah, the floor is important in Cactus, so I'll talk about that a bit. 
Um, when I was choosing four for the space, um, I wanted something that was quite unique to the, not, not usually used for um, a gallery floor. Like this stuff you use now for like loads of trendy bars and stuff like that, but I mean, I wanted it to be like, at the time it was kind of unique anyway to use for a floor. Um, so that when people see exhibitions in there on the internet that aren't credited, they always knew it was in Cactus. Yeah, so it was kind of a weird um, reason for it, but made sense. And then I took everything out of it, all the plugs. I should have left more plugs. I took every plug out apart from one in the corner. There was loads in there and they were really annoying. I should have left like a few, but you know, it's done now, it's fine. And um, made it all white. I thought this would take about three weeks in my head. Um, when I left uni, I thought, yeah, I'll be open in like a month. And then um, ended up being like six months, I think, five months. It took so long to get everything sorted. I didn't think it would. And then um, once I painted it white, it was really nice. And then the first artist I invited, Sebastian Jefford, said he wanted it to be this kind of colour, the whole space. So I had to repaint the whole thing, <laughs> <laughs> which was a nightmare. Of course, because the ceiling, I don't know if anyone's painted ceilings, but they're horrible. And it was cold. Um, and then with the floor, he said he wanted this like vinyl floor to go down instead, which is also a nightmare. Um, but at the time, I was kind of just saying yes to everything because I was, I guess, naive and excited and just a fair exhibition. But yeah, it turned out looking good, I think. Um, and then, yeah, second exhibition I had was a bit of a disaster. This is like the entrance to the Royal Standard. Um, and it we used to flood like every single week. It was a nightmare. And Liverpool rains like every day. So <coughs> this was the opening. It was like hardly anybody turned up because it was like the wettest day ever. And um, yeah, I haven't, I don't know why I haven't got pictures of the exhibition. I'm hiding them, I'm not, just haven't got them in. Um, I can show them after maybe. Um, and then I was doing this kind of internship at Rogue Studios, where it was um, Annie's and Tanisha's intern for like six months. Um, so just like sat in meetings with them and learn how they run the project space and learn a little bit about funding applications and stuff like that. Um, and then as a kind of a, a gift, they let me do an exhibition. And the idea for the exhibition was to have a party um, and everybody invited into the exhibition or to the party was allowed to bring a guest into the exhibition as well. So you could have like a plus one. Um, which is weird because not everyone used a plus one. I think so I have some artists who are kind of, don't want to help anybody and just look after themselves. So didn't want to like have a plus one, which is weird. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the morning. And um, I'd like 30 artists for this, which was a complete nightmare and I wouldn't recommend it for anybody. I thought it'd be easy, but 30 email, like 30 different people emailing you, it was, was crazy. Um, but it was loads of fun and the mess was left for the rest of the exhibition, it was made from, um, do, do you know, the, the, the private view. Um, and then this was the exhibition I opened with the Liverpool Biennial. Jesse Wine and Glenn Pudvine. And um, they're both from Chester, but live in London now. And um, Jess, Glenn's, Glenn's kind of um, a little bit older than me, but Jesse's, I guess, in his 30s and he's quite well established now. And um, I, got, I got a lot out of this exhibition because cause I launched it during the week of the Liverpool Biennial. Loads of, um, I guess, important people uh, were around that time, so they were all getting sent over from the Liverpool Biennial. Um, like, you know, um, Hans Ulrich, Sadie Coles, people like that, really big, kind of powerful um, art heads, um, which was great to meet them and for them to see it. And I got a lot of exposure um, from this, like the, the, the piece on the back wall was in freeze, 
um, um, stuff like that. So it was Liverpool was a good place to be whilst the bite annual was on. So you ever going to do anything in Liverpool? You should do it then, because there's just loads of football. But he glued that fish work um, to the wall with like arrow light or something, and um, it completely broke the wall, ripped the bricks out. So I had to get a plasterer in to fix it. Which again, I guess there's more this idea of running it. I kind of um, let anybody do anything they want, which causes a lot of problems, but keeps it exciting for me. Um, within reason, some people have asked to do some ridiculous things that are completely impossible. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had cream cut. Yeah, like this is, it was documented when it was already a bit dirty, but, um, so yeah, I still at this point hadn't shown the floor. I was really excited about it. And by this time, OSB was kind of in every bar in Liverpool, so it was ruined. But it was like white carpet, yeah. Um, and people, it's weird seeing who took the shoes off and who left them on. And visitors, um, I don't know. I guess it depends on what house you're raised in, who took them off and who left them on. But it was an interesting dynamic. Um, and then, um, yeah, I did the Manchester Contemporary Art Fair. I don't know if anybody's been there before, but um, this was like, yeah, not the year just gone by, the one before. Um, and the International Three Gallery in Salford now um, paid, paid for my booth for me um, to be there because it's quite expensive. Well, it's cheap for an art fair, but still expensive to me. Um, and I showed like five artists. Yeah, no, yeah, five. And um, what I wanted to do was just kind of show like a bit of what Cactus is about. The artists they were planning to do shows with, the artists they've already done shows with. Um, but yeah, I didn't sell anything, um, which was kind of okay because I didn't really go there to make all the money or anything but also annoying when you see what I seem works that I didn't think that were good with selling and um, I don't know maybe I shouldn't have tried to sell a leather jacket with flashing lights on it should have sold some like portrait painting or something maybe I would have had a better chance I don't know it's Dominic Watson um, it says feelings and as you can see from there and it kind of flashed. It was in, he built it, not built it. He wired it up himself, and um, every day it would break. Every day. <laughs> um, but he's made some. If you Google him um, for a thing with uh, Catlin Guide, he's made these one with really nice paintings on the back. They're really nice. And I had Alex Rathbone on the left, Katarina Fengler um, with the, like their Twix shaped like colourful sculptures, and then Jack and Charlie. <laughs> But it was good because Char I showed Charlie this year, I mean last year, and now he's represented by Vitrine Gallery, um, who were there last the, the year as well. And they ended up representing him, I think, through like one of the reasons seeing his work, and they ended up showing Jack as well. So I was really happy about that. Um, yeah. That's Katarina's show at Cactus. Um, she brought all the work in a suitcase from Berlin. Just paid for the flight. And then I got to show the floor finally. And then Harry Mead, we did a show, um, which was crazy in comparison. I think it was probably one of the most ambitious shows I've had. Um, all the work was, you can kind of see that um, gold sculpture is it's called Honey I Shrunk the Curator, so it's me on this gold box. And the gold box is um, a work that I got for free because he did a um, tweet that said, any anyone to re like um reply to this or whatever um with what work do you want can have it for free so i picked the um biggest shiny looking thing on his website which is great because it's gold plated and i could melt it down i guess or do something with it sell it but i took it to the offer at manchester contemporary this year and um somebody wanted to buy it who just wanted the box didn't want the me on top which was really sad. She said she'd um, seen something in Harrods similar. And she wanted to gift it to, as a wedding present to somebody, which was kind of annoying. 
didn't sell it to her now. She wanted, I think it was for sale for like £6,000 and she wanted it for four or three, I think. <coughs> it was too much money off, I thought. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe I should have done. I was kind of, I didn't really want to sell it to her because she didn't want me on it. Yeah. Maybe I could have kept that and tried to sell that for two grand. <laughs> but yeah, the work at the back is called, um, I think it's called Real G. It's like the Greg's logo or regular G or something. The, the smashed up stool on the floor is called Bad Day 3, I think, where he was angry and he smashed up his stool. And then the smaller gold cube it's like a decoy work by Helena and Samella. Um, I, I can't remember why. I should remember why. Can we delete this bit out of the video? I can't remember what that's about. <laughs> that's fine. Good. <laughs> Doesn't really matter, does it? It's fine. Um, yeah, and the, the show of Alex Rathbone, um, which was really good. I really liked it. Um, and he had this song that he made. It was like a gloomy, I think it was in like November. This gloomy, gloomy song, like really quite depressing. Um, and the show was quite gloomy as well. It was kind of perfect. But yeah. Uh, and then I did Candice Jacobs solo. So yeah, a bit, I don't know if you've noticed already, but I do only solo exhibitions or two person shows at Cactus and that is down to me, the method in which I curate shows and just pick things that I like um, and then give them free reign of the space so they don't really have like a curatorial um, hold on any of the exhibitions that I do, which I find really good and useful when I'm trying to still keep this identity as an artist alongside running the space because <coughs> it helps people not get too confused between the curator, artist, what is the kind of role. Um, it's very separate and the reasoning for it is not to be a curator, it's because I want more things to happen in Liverpool, uh, like similar to this, that is, that, that's the reason for it. Um, yeah, Charlie Got a Thomas did the show before last, um, and Jack Brinley which I thought these two shows were interesting in comparison because they both hung the works kind of similar places. And they both went, I think they both went to Royal College together at the same time. So no other Royal College teaches you to hang work on the left or what, but um, yeah, I guess they're very different shows. Um, he made this like ale, brewed his own ale to, to be saved at the exhibition, which was really strong and like, some of them were dodgy and like would fizz loads in the space. Bit of a nightmare. Yeah, and he made these, um, like put his hand into clay. I think it's like um, the hands from the first ever or the oldest ceramics place, um, foundry, sorry. Um, got the hand, got them to squeeze these bits of clay and made them into bronzes. <coughs> yeah, and then Alongside all of this, I was kind of um, hard, not hiding behind Cactus. Um, didn't really know what sort of work I wanted to make. Didn't really know what I was doing. So it was like a good distraction. I was kind of doing a lot of exhibitions at Cactus um, to keep myself busy, like almost one a month, I think it was. Um, and then got asked to do a solo exhibition at the International Three. Um, so it was a real chance to um, sh show you know a, a bigger body of work but I was really busy at the time with Cactus so we didn't get like a proper um, stab at it I didn't think um, but yeah this work um, I didn't get to show because it was late at the exhibition but um, I work on a rug stall with my dad um, and but my family's been doing that for like 45 years been selling rugs and he's always saying um, how bad rug designers are. And if he designed a rug, um, it would be so amazing. People would instantly buy it. And this is the rug he designed. We had it made. Um, 
which ended up just being like a kind of, I guess, next habitat kind of looking rug, which was fine. Um, but it was late, which was really good about. And then the Art Council collection bought it before I ever got to show it, um, which is kind of good because I wanted to sell it and it kind of made it conceptually correct because they actually did see it and buy it. I'm not sure how much they wanted the rug. I think they were just buying the idea, I think. Maybe not, I don't know. But what's good about it is it'll be kept, I think, forever um, and like taken out every six months to check it and kept in like a good environment, with no moths and everything. So it's really amazing for me um, to have that, you know, be kept forever. Um, yeah, this is one of the works I made for the show. It's called Streaker where I stood against the wall and the curator gave me a fake tan and like left this cartoon um, outline on the wall, which I don't know how it works so well because I've tried it since and it just doesn't work the same. Um, it like smudges and, but that time it worked really well. And I made these, oh yeah, so I was in the project space at the International 3 and they had um, a big, space too and you had one of their represented artists because it's like a commercial space in the bigger space and i was really annoyed that the, he got the bigger space and i only got the little space so i made these gojo hands um which the curators had to wear for the the opening so like when the two shows opened it seemed like they were really biased towards me and i like the idea of them trying to sell paintings with these big hands on of someone else um yeah, they didn't really stick to it, which was a bit annoying. They did, one of them did, but not the other one. She's fine, we're friends, I can say that about her. Um, but yeah. And then, got us to be in this show. So I met, this is Adam Carr. I don't know if anyone's been to Moston. He's the curator there. Um, and met him through just going to openings there. Um, it's a really, does anyone know the space? I don't know. Um, it's like a like a public gallery, Moston, yeah, yeah, um, like a public gallery. It runs like a really amazing program. It's in Landudno, but it runs like a really strong. Like Landudno is really lucky. Liverpool doesn't even have anything like it, it on that level. Moston, um, uh, how do you spell it? Sorry, yeah, yeah, um, M O S, um, T Y N, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But everyone should go there. It's really good. Um, and Adam to curate it. So I just met him through going there and being around. And oh yeah, and Jesse Wine, who I showed um, for the biennial, did a show there. So it's kind of those connections. But he asked me to be in this show in Rome, which was called Small Rome, which was a, um, like, I think it was like 40 artists or 50, quite a big show, um, but all really little works. And in the show was like, really quite famous conceptual artists like Maurizio Catlan, um, uh, uh, Ryan Gander was in it. I should know all these names, shouldn't I? Um, Jonathan Monk, who was like, I really looked up to when I was in uni. Yeah, big long list of like real artists I really, really like. So my idea was for it was to get a football and get them all to sign it. Kind of like a fan, I guess. Um, but I was kind of pretending to be naive, but I knew by all these artists signing this football, the, the value of the work would be big because it's got lots of famous signatures on it. So the balls, it was, it was price dependent on who signs it because I've done a few of them now. So I figured that out afterwards. But um, I, I, sold, I sold that one, which was really good because, yeah, and I know it's why, I know it's because got lots of artist signatures on it but I find that interesting how you can manipulate that um, here's another one I did uh, in Blackpool Grundy and then I did silver balls because I keep getting asked to do the same work and I got bored of doing the same football but <laughs> God, I feel when I'm keep getting, gonna get asked to do the more and more and more I'm gonna get so sick and tired of these footballs but it's fine, I guess. I've got to do another one in March. Um, 
No, they haven't yet, no. I've got a feeling that's coming now if I keep selling them. <laughs> they don't give them any money. But um, no, they haven't said no. It's interesting why they haven't. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's fine. Like, sign this ball. Don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, this was like a neon. Um, been collecting these neons, which are spare parts. Like, this guy in America sells these um, quick spare parts for neons, like from Budweiser, the outline, and um, Red Stripe, and all things like that and sells them as parts, but I just wired them up and have them as like these spare parts. I don't really know why I do that yet. <laughs> Apart from they look nice. Um, I haven't figured it out, I've shown a few of them. Uh, this was, so, this show, I was in, in um, Milan, um, was come from the show, I was in Rome. Um, and I showed this work was a carved baseball bat that said average Joe on it. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to think about how I got this show. I think it's important to say. Stefano, um, who made the paintings on the left, linked me up with the curator. I think that's how it happened. Um, who kind of works on the same, it's kind of the same circles as Fruta in Rome. Um, it's like a, I guess, you know, similar group of friends or uh, connections. Oh yeah, so I'll put that in. Um, and I'm gonna do a show here at Sabot in Romania. It's in Cluj um, later in the year, I think in the summer. Um, but the artist um, got the gallery to contact me because he liked my work and I sent over a PDF and then they asked me to do a show. That's literally how it happened. Um, which sounds like, a, I guess, a fluke, which it kind of is. But the gallery, Sabot, represent some really amazing artists and have a really good programme. So it's really exciting to be a part of that. Um, yeah, This is a painting of a rug, uh, which I had made in China, um, which is where the rug was made. Um, and it's actual size, so it's six foot by four foot. And it's one of the rugs that my dad keeps in it. He's got like a um, collection of rugs from like years years ago. Um, that he keeps in a kind of archive, I guess. Garage. And um, yeah, I, I wanted to put it on the floor, but it was for an art fair, so it was a bit dodgy. But I like the idea of um, having an expensive rug on a wall which kind of bizarre, and then having an expensive painting on the floor. I thought that reverse was quite interesting. Uh, and then Adam Carr put me in this not another show in Arezzo, um, which I made this work for, which is, uh, um, I don't know if anybody has drunk this thing called Hulk before. Has anyone heard of it? I think it might be a, a, a Liverpool thing, I don't know. Um, but basically, he <coughs> makes Powerade with a uh, strong bow cider. And it glows green. We used to drink it in school. And um, it was like an urban myth that if you drunk a full bottle, because it was like quite big, um, <clears throat> you'd turn into the Hulk. Or you get Hulk characteristics. So you, you know, you fight somebody or mm, smash up a skyscraper or something like that. So I, I drunk a bottle of it. And all that happened was I kind of like peed myself and. <laughs> fell asleep, but I kept the bottle as a kind of trophy. So I had this um, bronze made off the bottle, which I thought, I wanted to make it like this aged green to kind of, it was meant to be brighter, it didn't, I don't know why it didn't turn off as bright. Um, and I made a crackle to kind of look like Hulk skin. I don't know if that works, but yeah. Um, I had it sent from the foundry to the exhibition because it was late. I never got to see it and then someone bought it so I still haven't seen it. Which is a real shame because yeah. I wanted it back but I put like quite a big price on it as well because I thought I don't want to sell it so you know I ended up selling but you know paid for a holiday so mm -hmm. it's fine. But I guess I remain kind of 
separated from the work that I'm making, not too attached, quite happy for things to sell, quite happy to throw them away and not be too precious about them. But that's partly because a lot of it I have made um, and I don't make myself, so I'm not that attached to it. And um, I don't know why I'm not attached to it. It should be maybe more. But, and then did the show at Sprees in Munich, which is like in the university there, which is like run by a gang of really interesting students. And my friend, Callum Crawford, who made the neon, had a solo there and then I got to do a show there so that was that kind of connection. He, um, Doug Bowen at Cactus made these um, big scratch cards which uh, they come just grey and then whoever buys one or the curator of the exhibition or whatever scratches them off however much or little they want. So they're like big scratch cards where you never really win anything. Uh, yeah, you can see them better, I think, there. Um, and then this was my booth, Cactus booth at Manchester Contemporary this year, which was a little bit more wild this time. Uh, the, the walls are painted in this camouflage, which is a work by Harry Meadley, and he colour matched each, or like a colour from each of the works. So like the grey from one of the t-shirt works, um, the pink from Doug's and then I don't know where they um the why the white I think it was to do with the clay. So these are heat sensitive t-shirts on uh, stretched around um like wood. Can't really see them over there, but kind of make it out. Uh yeah, I thought I'd talk about my social media game. Um it leading up to opening a cactus I was kind of hammering it like with stuff relating to cactus kind of being um, stupid purposely because I knew that other galleries were really serious um, yeah and that's kind of how I got a reputation online a lot of people never come to the space but know about it um, through online which because they always try to have really good documentation of the exhibitions. Um, and I say stupid things on Twitter. That's why people know about it, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought this is weird because I've got like flu now. This is from ages ago, this. And it says I can feel the man flu coming. Must be always sick, working too hard, I think. <sighs> Not really, but yeah. Um, and this is a drawing of, um, haven't made this work yet, but I thought it'd be interesting to put in. It's a full-size doll of me. It's going to be. Um, so, like, do you know, uh, you get, like, boyfriend cushions, or I think they do girlfriend ones as well, um, which is, like, an arm that you kind of cuddle up to. But I thought it'd be good to have a full-size teddy of an artist that collectors can cuddle up to at night. So um, that's going to be the plan. But I'm not sure how it's going to look. These are kind of how it looks. That's not me. That's someone else. He makes them, this guy. But I'm going to make them of other people, I think, that I meet and come across, um, like artist friends, um, which I think will be good. Similar to the football, kind of. Um, not stealing them. I guess, I don't know, taking something about them and kind of, um, you know, overdoing it in the teddies a bit. But yeah, I think it's going to be good. But it's in, they're going to be, this this one of me is going to be in a show at International 3. They've, they're going to put me in the bigger <laughs> space <laughs> after me moaning about it, probably. Um, it's going to be called Mummy's Boy. And all of the work's going to be made about the relationship I have with my mum. Um, which is a good one. <laughs> it sounds like it's going to be depressing. It's not at all. Um, so, like, we're making plant pots together, me and my mum, at this local um, ceramics place. I've got a um, design company to photograph my mum's fruit bowl. Who'd like, I think they did, like, Iceland. You know, like, Iceland's gone all, like, 
trendy now, whatever, or kind of. Found sound like I'm on a loan here, but I mean with their M and S ripoffs. I think it was them. I think <laughs> that company is going to do it, so it's going to be really slick photos of my mum's fruit bowl. Um, and I make these as well. Um, which you have to pay to be in a painting with me. Um, and I always go at the front and when there's more than two, I guess. But yeah, this is Richard Parry, who is the curator at Grundy, and Linda Morris, Morris, I think. That's her name, isn't it? Yeah, um, on the left. And um, the called like, here's me and, I think called that? <laughs> here's me and our, you know, like people in Liverpool, I don't know, Northern, refer to people like family members as our Terry or whatever. You know, these are called like me and our Richard and our Linda. Um, yeah, and then this one is a he's a collector in Manchester called Connell, and he bought one. <laughs> Which at the time I just told him about the idea. <laughs> he come to my studio. I didn't really have much work to show him, but I told him about this idea that I had where people pay to be in a painting with me. And he kind of think. I think it must have been playing on his mind because he messaged me about it, like, you know, can, we, can I have one? And then we figured out a price and we did it, which is, he said in his home, everyone always asks about why, <laughs> like, I'm, you know, on his wall and they're like, who am I? Right, well, and, um, and I thought it was good as well, this one, Richard put on Facebook and everyone put like, I know who Linda is and I know who you are, but who the hell is that like guy in the front? <laughs> is it like your son? Like, who is it? You know, like, which I thought was good because it's playing on the idea of being like a nobody and like overdoing it um, t t to the point of extreme. Uh, yeah, and I made a list with, without Kanye, his mouth. Um, I don't know, I could just email this to you maybe, but this is a very like selfish list of places I kind of, yeah, look at. Um, yeah, there's not all every place I walk on on there, but I mean, it's the places I, I'm I'm kind of interested in. But yeah, don't know if I spoke for ages. Do you want me to say anything? Is that okay? Yeah. Cheers. Yeah.